is dead and will never rise again because we have this destroyed its moral strength, the Khilafat and Islam. Now, this was a statement that was made uh, well over a hundred years ago. And since then, what have we seen? We've seen the children of the Ummah being starved to death by people right across the entire world, including our very own rulers. Uh, we have seen uh, believers being reduced to mass poverty. We've seen uh, internal, external displacements. We've seen a refugee crisis of mammoth proportions. We've seen an ummah that is ruled by dictators, uh, those who oppress, who imprison, who torture, and who kill because of one thing, because they believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with all of that, it has left the Muslim ummah leaderless, without any direction. And while the ummah has been slaughtered, there has been no guardian, there has been no khalif to protect its blood, nor provide any dignity to the oppressed. And we joined this morning talking a hundred years since the fall of the Khilafah, 28th of Rajab today, 1442. We joined on the line from the UK by Taji Mustafa. Taji, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, uh, you know, a hundred years later, Brother Taji, and, uh, you know, I've just uh, summarized it in my introduction into as to where we are as a Muslim Ummah. And one cannot forget, one cannot forget that this was in the last hundred years, this, must say, uh, this was the most tragic event that had occurred for the Muslim Ummah. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, I think the fact that we're discussing this today is actually a, a great sign of hope and, and a great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That a hundred years ago, my parents, uh, your parents, brothers, uh, sisters who are listening, did not live in the Khilaf. We lived, they, they existed after 1924, 1342 Hijri. Um, but for nations, and we are a nation, we are an ummah. We are one ummah. And anniversaries are important. Events are important. We're talking about Islam Miharaj in this month of Raja. We're talking about uh, the destruction of the Khilafah. We'll be talking soon about Ramadan. These dates are not just dates for us. Islam Miharaj reminds us of the Islam Miharaj of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Bayt al He ascended to the heavens. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala all those things remind us the Salah was sent down. The deep. So different days and events in the Islamic calendar are crucial to remember so that we take the lessons from them, we reaffirm our commitment to worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you said, what happened on that day in uh, the, the 3rd of March 1924, 1342 Hijri, was cutting of what was set in place by our beloved, beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he went to Medina and established an Islamic state, a new society, buying, selling, trading, moral values from the Quran and the Sunnah, implemented as an example for mankind. And that continued for over 1,300 years. This Ummah had dignity. We were looked upon as the people who had solutions, not because we're clever people as Muslims, but because we are the Ummah that has revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where the ones who say, this life, everything, we dedicate and worship you. So that society which existed was now abolished. And the consequences of that for the individual Muslim, for the family of this Muslim, and for the owner of Islam has been catastrophic. Just before you put me on um, to your show, I was listening to the advert. The advert just before the show, mashallah, some brothers, some sisters, some organizations, are trying to do relief work in the Muslim world. If we think of that for a moment, Syria, Yemen, Palestine, Somalia, is it that this Ummah lacks wealth? We lack wealth? In London, there are, there are Arab, so-called Arab rulers who are buying footballs, football stadiums, football clubs in the UK, buying paintings for hundreds of millions of pounds. We don't lack wealth, we don't lack resources, we lack that there is a guardian, a Khalifa, who's directed by the Quran and Sunnah to take this wealth from those who have it from the places and to distribute it. So the cutting of the revelation, the implementation of the revelation has been catastrophic. But alhamdulillah, 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 we're talking about it today. We're reminding ourselves and our children 
to say, look forward and how to do work to re-establish the state to implement Islam on this earth. Yes. Now, Brother Taji, obviously, when one goes back and uh, when one studies uh, history, when one studies the events that it basically led to the fall of the Khilafah, now this definitely was a plan in making. And uh, this plan had taken a very, very long time. There was a specific uh, reason. There was a specific uh, objective. There was a specific result that had to obviously uh, occur at the end of the day. And uh, this obviously was summarized in terms of uh, uh, yeah, the, the statement that I had made earlier, talking about uh, uh, bringing an end to anything, anything which brings about Islamic unity between the sons of the Muslims. Sahih, Sahih. The, the, you know, we can trace this again back to the life of the Prophet When Allah said this being, the Quraysh were not happy. Because you are saying we should worship one God. You're saying our privileges. You're saying our domination. We the powerful dominating the poor. You're saying our treatment of women. You're saying our relationship between the tribes. All of these things you're saying should change to be a new way. A way that is guided by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet So there was always a struggle against Islam in a society of order. Islam as a deen implemented. But this, the Muslims became strong, the Khulafa Rashid, the Umayyads, the Abbas, the Uthmanis. We, we entered Europe, we knocked at the gates of Vienna. This Ummah was powerful. And maybe something that, which is very strange in our time, but what, as you said, history is very important. There was a time in the, in the world, a leading nation was the Khilafah state, the Islamic Khilafah state, a state that implemented Islam, whether it was in Damascus or Baghdad or, or Istanbul. And so those powers, who saw this new way of life, life the Pharisees from my time, were against it. When I say the Kufar, George, John, my neighbors, the ruling powers of the day, the British Empire, uh, and now the American Empire, if you can call it that, even though it's declining itself. Um, and so there was a long plan for the last 300 years, say, how can we destroy this unity? How can we destroy this strength, this civilization that is coming and knocking on the gates of Europe? And you know, when Islam spreads, it's to spread mercy is to give people an alternative. So there was a plan. And that plan, on the battlefield, it was very difficult to defeat the Muslims. They conquered al goods, the Crusaders, and we took it back. So different battles, even though we had ups and downs, our history is ups and downs, the Muslim Ummah was generally strong and united. Very important, united. But towards the end, the last two or so hundred years, some of the sons of this Ummah, some of the traitors within, they started to encounter the British and the Americans, started to spread ideas like nationalism. So Arabs turned against Arabs. This Khilaf is not for us. This Khilaf is for you. Turks turned against us. Some of the South started to turn against each other. Until finally people like Mustafa Kamal had their way, and in 1924 the Khilaf was weak, they were able to destroy it. Today, a hundred years later, we find that when Palestine is attacked, Muslims feel as one. When the Prophet is attacked by the French government, the Muslims in South Africa, in Sudan, in Zambia, in, 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 in Zimbabwe, in Al Quds, feel as one. When we see the suffering of the Rohingyas, we feel as one. When we hear about Somalia, we feel as one. So now the feeling of Ummah was ever destroyed. In Ramadan, we feel as one. What's missing is to establish the unity of this Ummah by removing the borders and applying the Quran and Sunnah again. So the plan was a long one. It succeeded, but now we can see that it, it will not succeed forever because the Muslims are talking about unity, living by this Quran, reciting it in Ramadan, reciting it in our homes, but also living by it, having its laws implemented in a society to be a beacon of justice for mankind and all the problems the world is suffering for them to have a place to look to and say, wow, those people live by Islam. That is an example of racial harmony, example of uh, people living together, the, the, the poor having access to wealth, etc. So it was a plan, but, but really Allah is the best of planners and there will be those who turn that plan upside down and re-establish the Khilafah again, inshallah. Inshallah, Brother Taji, we're just going to go for a quick break. Uh, we'll be back with you. <laughs> Penny 
Appeal's Education First campaign helps children to get access to quality education. I'm 14 years old. When I grow up, I'd like to be a scientist. We believe every child belongs at school. And we want education, a better education. Learning and dreaming their way to a better future. With your help, we can provide classrooms, desks, stationery packs and school shoes. Help make these dreams a reality. Visit www.pennyappeal.org.za or call 031 573 Penny Appeal. Small change. Big difference. Doozy Med Medicine Depot Retail Pharmacy and Emergency Medical Depot. Conveniently situated in the Doozy Med Medical Center, Corner Burger and Bossel Street, Peter Marisburg. We provide safe, affordable, and convenient medical facilities. Open till 10 p.m. every day of the year. We have a full house clinic that operates from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m., which is run by a qualified sister. The clinic offers immunization, vaccination, wellness, general consultation, and more. Call Doozy Med Medicine Depot on 033-3421200. Doozy Med Medicine Depot, your pharmacy of choice. Where in this dunya am I going to find a scarf to match? Only at Al Shazia, the scarf specialist. We stock the largest range of scarves for every occasion. Ocharzia's pre-Ramadan sale now on. 15% of all ladies and girls are buyers. 15% of all men's and boys' kurtas. Sale ends Sunday, the 14th of March. Ocharzia, 215 Sparks Road, Overport, Durban. Ocharzia, the scarf specialist. Give charity without delay, for it stands in the way of calamities. For child-headed households in Blumendal in the Eastern Cape, the daily diet consists of white bread and a carton of cheap juice or sugar water, known locally as the poppy water diet. Make a difference to that one child or family. The al Foundation has over the past 13 years worked on the ground and gathered the largest database in the Eastern Cape region of Muslim Zaka recipients. Phone our offices at 041-484-1288 or visit our website at www.alfida.co.za. The al Foundation, your social investment partner in the Eastern Cape. Breaking stereotypes, moving boundaries, joining hands. Salam Media. <laughs> Humanity sets the agenda. The time is just gone 8.35 a.m. on this Juma morning and it is the 28th of Rajab uh, and we are talking about uh, the fall of the Khilafah, remembering the uh, fall of the Khilafah. But uh, is it about simple uh, commemoration? Uh, is it just about uh, an event that uh, we need to grieve about, but uh, is there a lot more that we can do? And uh, we have got uh, still on the line with us, uh, Brother Taji Mustafa, who has joined us out of the United Kingdom this morning. Now, Brother Taji, uh, we have sometimes uh, this feeling of being alienated, uh, of being isolated. And uh, this is uh, right across the entire world. And... Uh, when one looks at uh, what is happening around us, we've seen so much death, we've seen so much destruction, we've seen tragedy, we've seen the honor of the Muslim woman who has not been protected, we've seen our children suffering, hunger, poverty. Now, all of this at the end of the day are issues that are at the forefront that are running very, very strongly in the minds and in the veins of the Muslim Ummah. And uh, sometimes we have the state of hopelessness. But uh, I'm sure at this point in time, as we remember a hundred years later since the fall of the Khilafah, it is not time for us to 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 uh, become uh, despondent and at the same time, uh, you know, uh, uh, obviously say that you know we have absolutely no hope whatsoever, considering our plight at this point in time. Uh, alhamdulillah, the, the very important point you mentioned. Um, and the question then is, how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala direct, instruct, guide us to deal with such a situation? And you, you look at one side, so many issues facing the Ummah, you know, I, I, I have to confess, I have to confess, I find it difficult to follow news from Yemen. Because when I follow news from Yemen, news reports, you see children, 
It reminds you of people from concentration camps, their bones. You know, there's a bomb in here. There's a, so that can be on one hand, but how do we deal with that? How do we counter that? Allah in the Quran reminds us. وَعَضَ اللَّهُ الْإِنَا آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَا يَسْتَخْلِفَ لَهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ أَمَا اسْتَخْلَفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ That He, subhanahu wa ta'ala, has promised those who believe and do righteous deeds since He will certainly grant them succession to the present rulers fill up in this earth to grant it to those who bore them. Brothers, sisters, you know, Allah is saying, I promise. If I promise, if Brother Inayah promises, if your wife, your husband promises something, they may forget, they may let you down. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Qawi al-Aziz, promises victory will come to this, all my better days will come, that is a promise to absolutely believe it. Allah never, ever, ever lets us down. So I think the first thing is the promise. The promise of Allah, Islam will return. Victory of Islam will come again. The khilaf will return, inshallah. That should lead one, the P is promised. means absolute belief and confidence Islam will return. That is the first thing. The second thing is, from that promise, promise should come a confidence, yeah? I call it PCW. Promise, confidence, work. Promise from Allah, believe in it. Confidence. If Allah is got your side, then you have to be confident. Absolute confidence that the Islamic civilization will be reestablished. Just like the Sahaba in Makkah, faced a lot of problems. In Makkah, the Muslims were persecuted, there were fewer numbers. But when they had these verses of Quran, they worked with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he said, you say the truth. You believe in Allah. You are coming from the Lord of the heavens and the earth. If he says that Islam will be victorious one day, Bismillah, we are with you. So that confidence should mean that Islam will return. to be a beacon for the world. The people who are suffering, facing racial injustice in America, one day will look to a society where Islam will exist, inshallah. So people should not say, you know, things are so bad, which is hopeless. No. Look at the world today. Capitalism has been questioned. We have problems in the West where I am sitting here. You know, abused children, women suffer. If you hear the news, you will think, well, what is going on? So we want more Islam. And the third thing is, if you have the promise from Allah, peace. If you have the confidence that this Islam is the thing that will solve mankind's problems, and therefore you can be confident Allah is on your side, then the issue for the Muslim is to work. Work for this duty, this obligation to add our voices, to call for the unity of the Ummah by the Khilafah, to call for the implementation of Islam by the Khilafah, which is the instrument Allah has said, to call for the problems to be solved by the solutions, the ahkam from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet and to know that Allah is the best of helpers. So this becomes a positive outlook for the Muslim that we're on a stage, we're on a stage called life, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, however Allah gives us life, subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, play our role, add our voices, awaken this ummah, call for its unity, call for the return of the khilafah, and that Allah will grant victory to this ummah. So it's not a time to be hopeless. A uh, hundred years after it was abolished, we are talking about it on Salam media. Who would have thought a hundred years ago, you in South Africa, me in the UK, listeners from wherever in the world, so many events in this last few days uh, across the world, commemorating people looking for and saying we need to join hands and work for it. This is Allah's mercy on this ummah, and we need to be part of this, make dua for it, support it in every way we can, call for it, feed our children with the understanding of it, make dua for it, and inshallah, Allah's victory will come soon to this ummah. Yes, and I think just uh, finally, Brother Taji, and uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, understand it, feed our children with it, and uh, this is an aspect that uh, sometimes we actually find a uh, lacking, where we've got all these uh, periods in Islamic history uh, from the Sira of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through all the centuries, through all the years, through all the fourteen hundred years, and sometimes we tend to lose a uh, certain aspects of our glorious history, and one of them has been the Khilafah. We sometimes we find there is not a lot of emphasis on understanding where we've actually come from, what our history has been. And that is the reason why sometimes we tend not to appreciate what is happening around us. Absolutely. Brother, there's a statement that I love. Uh, someone said, Al Khilafa Ikamatuddin wa Tawheedul Muslimi. The Khilafa establishes the deen Islam and unites the Muslims. So, we live in a world today without the Khilafah, actually our minds have been affected. That we, we grew up in the absence of the Khilafah, we grew up in nation states, we grew up in tribes, 
And so what is success? What is victory? I'm a farmer. I'm a doctor. I'm an industrialist. I'm an IT guy. I look after my family. That's it. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just send Islam to show that Taji working in IT or teaching or whatever? That's it. It's Islam came. وَمَا أَمْصَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He gave the Sahabas a vision of the world. How to change the world. How to look after human beings. This is our responsibility as an ummah. That's so our vision has to be big. And somebody said, oh, Brother Taji, Brother Inayat, you're talking big. Because Islam is big. The Prophet ﷺ in the midst of Arabia, in a time when there was not a telephone, he gave the Sahaba the vision that they came to look after the world because they are the ones giving the revelation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's very important we remind ourselves of that today. That a Muslim Ummah has a responsibility to mankind. Look at the problems in Africa. Look at the problems that your adverts on the radio are tackling. Muslims are trying their best. Alhamdulillah, may Allah reward them. Where is the role of Islam? The role of Islam is that it has a state which implements the deen. That state represents Islam and this ummah and with its resources and the revelation from Allah, it helps to look after the whole of mankind. So it's very important we have that vision. It's very important that we think on the level Islam set of the thing. We seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We play our role. And the day we die and we're questioned, we're able to stand in front of our Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Ya Allah, I did my bit. Ya Allah, I work for the unity of this ummah. Ya Allah, I work to save mankind. By establishing your deen in a state, in the Khilafah state, which carried it to mankind to save the people who are suffering all over the world, please accept our deed, Ya Allah. Please enable us to be those who you have mercy on and able to enter your journey, inshallah. So, brothers, there is a, the vision is big. Muslims should not think small. No way. Muslims should be confident we have the correct deen because we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That deen is establishing this world by having a state that represents it. The revelation of Allah is applied in a state, in a society, which becomes a beacon, an example for mankind, for the people who are suffering all over the world. May Allah enable us to join hands, to work, to make dua for it, to work, to establish it, to remember it on this anniversary. And inshallah, pray for the better days, join this work, and that Allah will grant victory to this ummah, and by that, will bring better days, not just for us, but for the whole of mankind, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, I mean, Summa, I mean, Brother Taji, Jazakallah, it's always for your time. Allah accept, Allah reward your efforts and uh, have yourself a wonderful, a spiritually uplifting Jumu'ah, Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for having me. Allah rewards your work and continue to bless us and bless us all, Inshallah. I mean. Osman's Taj Mahal Spice and Rice. For over 80 years, Osman's Taj Mahal have been perfecting the art of the perfect blend of spices, pure, aromatic, and well-seasoned. Spices to tantalize your taste buds. From creative cuisines to gastronomical gourmet goodies. From exotic odors to traditional dishes, Osman's Taj Mahal have remained synonymous with quality spices and condiments. Taj Mahal rice, beans, and lentils.